This is part two of the history of cacao, cacao ceremony and spiritual colonization. So I divided this video into parts so that you can either listen to the whole story of uh, the, the legacy of Mexican culture in the previous video or just focus on the story of cacao ceremony here. I really wish you listened to the first one as well. But anyway, cacao ceremony. Hmm. The other day I was I was surfing the internet and I saw in my feed this video of a group of men replicating a hapa. And it was a group of white men from a group that I actually know, and I, and I actually know that teacher, I interviewed him for another event many years ago, uh, and they were replicating a haka. And there was this sense of why can we not do this? Like, that is primal and connects us to our primal energy. Mm. But it was so messed up to watch that because the, there is a whole spirituality that backs that up. There is a whole tradition and ancestors and spirits that back that, back that up. Well, how could, I, could it have been done well? Because there are ways in which it can be done. There are ways in which people can share and enjoy the traditions of indigenous cultures in a way that it's respectful. There are ways. I will get to that point. But looking at that group of men replicating the haka made me think about how uncomfortable it is to see all these white girls and some men as well replicating the cacao ceremony right and i'm playing the shaman and, and and doing the cacao practice and it's painful to see it feels painful because they are stripping it away from its roots, which is us, our indigenous community. And if you strip something away from its roots and just use it for your benefit, how do you call that? Colonization. There we are being colonized again, having our beautiful medicine taken away from us and being used by a group of white people for their own benefit. That's, mess, that's messed up. And that's so very common. You see people taking indigenous traditions and indigenous deities and indigenous um, teachings that, that they don't really have permission to share without an indigenous teacher. And there they are getting a lot of money for those teachings. We, like the haka that I just said, that retreat where they did that haka gave those people a lot of money. Did that money go to a Maori or, or Icelander? Islander. The, the, I, sorry, English is not my native tongue. It's people from the islands, uh, not from Iceland. Sorry if I mispronounce. Um, did that money get to them? No, no, it didn't. That money was for the white man that took that practice that didn't belong to him and used it for his benefit. 
stripping it away from its roots. That's exactly the same thing that's happening with the cacao. There are abuelitos de tradición, shamans that are indigenous, that could guide these ceremonies. Ask me if they are invited to the events of these white people. Yeah, the answer is no. And there are many, 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 many. And they can say, well, why could you invite them? Do you just have to prepare the cacao and infuse it with your divine energy because we are all divine? That's it. That's it. That's enough to share the cacao. <laughs> Cute. No, that's not. That's stripping it away from its roots and using it for your own benefit. And that's colonization. How can you do that in a way that it's not colonizing? in a way that it's respectful, in a way that it's actually empowering those indigenous communities that they are getting so much from. Sorry, my computer moves because it's on my lap. <laughs> this just gets me, it just hurts me. And, and, and it does because I, I do have a story about that, about people taking my grandparents, my abuelitos spirituales, my spiritual grandparents, and then denying me entrance to that space. Like so many people from India that have been stripped away from their yogi tradition, just to be denied access to the yoga festivals and to the yoga events and to the yoga representation in the world, right? Like, just like that. That's messed up. If you cannot see how messed up that is, you really need to check up your privilege because it's messed up because you're taking those things that are sacred to us, you're taking them away from us. If you want to do a cacao ceremony, invite an abuelito from Guatemala, from here, from the Mayan region, from any part of Mexico. There are so many beautiful, loving uh, abuelitos or shamans that could guide that, that kind of ceremony or ritual. Just like with the example of the jaca that I, that I just told you. It would have been different if they had invited a Maori person specialized in hakas to guide them through a ritual and if they had paid him well and so that he could explain the meaning, the, the appropriate form, um, a haka that is allowed for them to repeat because there are different hakas. And, and if it was done with that reverence, with that respect, that would have made a whole difference. In the spiritual community where I was first taught, it was a community guided by a powerful group of black women. It was a community from Ethiopia. The, the, the root, the tradition came from, from Ethiopia. And this master teacher, this powerful teacher, could usually invite other teachers to collaborate with her, or she could be invited to collaborate with other teachers as well in their schools. So you had the power of this African spiritual master teacher sharing the space with a Wiccan teacher or with a hermetic teacher or with you know the, with different teachers from different parts of the world and there was this sense of respect it was I am the teacher of my tradition which is related to my bloodline and I invite other teachers from their traditions and and, and this teacher of mine was not pretending Shokma was her name she was not pretending to be a Wiccan or to be, you know, a, a shaman in 
whatever other tradition. She was not pretending to be to be an initiate in those traditions, even even when she was she had like many master teachers honorary um, initiations into the into those uh, and grades into those traditions. But she was inviting the teachers of those traditions or she was invited into their rituals because that's the way real mystics work. They are all connected and they all invite one another. It wasn't like, oh my God, I did a ritual. Um, I, I, I did a voodoo ritual with this teacher and then that means that I already know how to replicate the ritual. That's messed up, that's white colonialism. So the way in which a cacao ceremony should be made should be by inviting an abuelito or a shaman that has been trained by, a, by abuelito uh, or abuelita to do the ceremony in the appropriate way, in a way in which the elements that are connected to the roots of cacao are summoned. A way in which people understand that they are not going to be shamans and they, they cannot say, uh, yeah, I will do cacao ceremonies everywhere now because I received a cacao ceremony. They, they are going to respect the, the medicine that they are receiving because they will understand the meaning behind the medicine and the connection of the medicine with the land and the people. Because for indigenous cultures, our plants, our ancestors, our nature and ourselves are all connected all connected so that's why it's such a blasphemy to take it away to strip it away from the connections the roots that it has and then to use it as if it was yours yeah i am a cacao ceremony teacher mm. so there is also another detail that it's particularly important. And it is that the cacao ceremony that so many people is receiving, the version of cacao that so many people is receiving for real shamans and real abuelitos de tradición, it's nothing but having a hot chocolate. I have this amazing friend of mine who is one of the, of the few guardians um, that, that protect the indigenous community. I, I have an interview with her uh, in, my, in my Instagram and in my podcast. And we were talking about the medicine, the sacred medicine. And one of the things that she just has shared with me is that the way in which we prepare the cacao for the cacao ceremonies of white people, it's not really impactful and sacred and it's just like oh yeah so they are sitting down and having hot chocolate like it's not really healing your heart she told me how the ceremony actually happens and and listen to this she told me that means i haven't even experienced that and there's a reason for that. She explained to me that cacao, as many of you have heard, because that's what we hear in the in the cacao ceremonies, right? Like, yeah, this is going to heal your heart because it's going to open your heart chakra. Yeah, well, chocolate has dopamine. You're having a warm chocolate that's giving you dopamine. That's not a real cacao ceremony. A cacao ceremony, it's strong medicine that could, yeah, open your heart so widely, so madly, so intensely 
that it brings you down in tears and makes you vomit. According to this amazing shaman, the preparation, it's very, um, very intense and very bitter, so bitter, so intense that people can just have one tiny sip and it's disgusting. The taste is disgusting. It's super bitter. And then they start vomiting and feeling that pain that, that brings them to the ground and makes them cry. And this medicine, because any person that actually does good shamanism knows that you don't just give away the sacred medicine. You know that people just go to Tulum and do ayahuasca woo, with the juice that is in the teepee. That is, that, yeah, that's not real shamans doing real shamanic medicine. That is spiritual colonialism and tourism. Real shamans just give you the medicine if your spiritual sickness is needing it. Meaning they are not just going to give you this intense, heartbreaking open ceremony just for fun, just so that you have the experience. Yeah. No, they are going to give you this medicine if you have such intense PTSD and dissociation that you really need to, to break your heart open because it's been so sheltered so protected from any sensation that you grew numb. And that's when to intense numbness, they allow people the medicine of cacao to break their hearts open. That is the real use of cacao ceremony. Now, the lighter version, the touristic version, the, yeah, let's all sit and sing Kumbaya and sing Abuelita, Abuelita, da, 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 da. Well, that, that is a lighter version. Um, and it's, it's lovely. It's a beautiful way to connect to the earth, to connect to the medicine of the El Abuelito cacao in a way that it's more gentle and that everybody can have access to. That is also real. And there are shamans out there doing that and preparing beautiful and delicious uh, cacao preparations for people to get a, a very diluted heart medicine because not all of us need that heart surgery. Some of us just need this heartwarming sensation, you know? So there are two levels. There, there are three levels of cacao ceremonies. The true heart surgery level that most of us will not need to have access to. The diluted, warm, heartwarming, gentle ceremony and the touristic bullshit. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. What it is. The touristic bullshit is the one that has nothing to do with the roots anymore, that everybody just goes and says, yeah, I'm making cacao for everybody. Woo -woo. That, that's just bullshit. I mean, bullshit in the spiritual sense, of course, enjoy your cacao. It's delicious. You should definitely prepare cacao uh, because it's healthy and it's full of antioxidants and it's going to give you dopamine and it's delicious. Oh my gosh, I love cacao. It's so yummy. It's so delicious. Have it uh, bitter, have it with herbs, have it with different uh, antioxidants and have it with different um, superfoods. It, it, it's an amazing meal. Go and have it. That's amazing but it's not a ceremony. It's having a nice cup of hot chocolate 
and sitting around it and talking with one another. Hey, what's up? Yeah, let's gossip about your cousin. Yeah, I mean, that's just a nice way to sit around and, and have a conversation. And it's going to make you feel good because dopamine, because cacao is yummy and delicious. And oh my gosh, I, I want some chocolate just right now. That, that That's great. And then the, the middle one, the one that is a ceremony that, this is the, this extreme, the touristic one. Then we have the other extreme, the super shamanistic heart surgery one. But the, the middle one, the one that it's diluted, heartwarming, yet powerful and beautiful, earth connecting and, and community connecting ceremony. That one, that one is what I, I feel like most of, of people are craving for. And what many ceremony providers are trying to give or are, gi are giving. And for that one, it's important to do it with people that has training, that has training in the preparation, uh, that has training in understanding the, the elements of the spirituality of cacao and its origins and that it's physically connected to it. That is important. I'm going to repeat it. It's important to do your indigenous ceremony with people that is actually indigenous. Even if it is just to give back and respect that people. If you're going to do a cacao ceremony, make sure that the person running the ceremony is from one of the nations where cacao came from, for whom that tradition is alive and running through our veins. Uh, and make sure to have, if, if you're going to, to do rituals, retreats, uh, you know, things that are bigger, hire an elder, a shaman to guide the ritual. It's going to be such a different experience. It's going to be a hugely different experience. I, I, I had that experience once with a teacher, with a teacher training. I was training um, to be a to, to, I was training shamanistic, Mayan shamanistic um, concepts. I do not call myself a Mayan shaman anymore for a time I did, but the truth is I just learned some concepts. Yes, my father is a hundred percent or was a hundred percent Mayan, but still I cannot in, in honestly call myself a shaman Mayan. A Mayan shaman. <laughs> I cannot. I'm not. That takes a kind of training that I do not have. But still, I know the, the concepts and the origins. And, and I am a priestess in my own right and in my own tradition. But that's another thing. So the thing is, in this training that I'm telling you about of Mayan uh, uh, stuff, uh, La Mujer Shaman, what's the name of the, of the training? Um, they invited this elder to prepare a delicious medicine made with a root that I don't know what it was, what it had. But I remember feeling, I'm very sensitive to energy because I've been training ever since I'm 12, since, since I was 12. And I remember feeling how my whole being was moved into another space of, of consciousness. Just felt everything opening up inside of me. Just by having one small sip of that drink that this shaman made. 
uh, skip forward to one year later, I went to the same event with the same teacher, but this time she didn't invite this shaman, uh, this abuelito. And she prepared, or somebody in her group prepared the same drink. And I had it, and it was just a, yeah, you know, it's fresh, it's nice, but it doesn't have that strength, that power. It didn't blow my mind. That's the same experience I have had with cacao ceremonies. I've been like, oh, yeah, you drink this and it's cool. Yeah, it's tasty. Let's have another one. Well, I have been in ceremonies guided by these real powerful teachers where just one touch, just one drink, just one whatever pulls you into a whole other dimension. So you need to get people that actually know how to make the preparation, how to guide the ritual in a way that it's actually respectful of the roots of the medicine and that it's connected by blood to that magic, to that medicine. And that's all I'm going to say about it. That's all I have to say about it. That's, that's how we stop colonialism. That's how we are real allies. And how we truly respect traditions. We need to support the communities that bring this medicine. That's also very important. If you're going to buy your cacao, make sure to buy it from places that where, where it goes to indigenous communities. I have seen beautiful cacao preparations with the most simple chocolate bars or cacao bars because uh, they, they, they make it with more or less cacao content uh, made by indigenous communities and they are the most delicious and simple. So try to support the communities directly. If you support some American company that it's buying from indigenous communities and saying, oh yeah, we buy from the from organic from indigenous communities, you don't really know how much they are paying them, but it's usually not that much. So try to give directly to these communities. Tengan tantita madre, have some respect. These people is starving, it's struggling, it's, it's holding on to the very It's holding on to these things that, that have given them value for so long. And then colonization is coming and taking it away. It's the same thing that happened with the, with the avocado. I, I, I was giving this example in an interview I gave some, some years ago, but I'm going to repeat it here. Um, avocados for us, for Mexicans, are part of our life, how we grew up. We had avocados in our table. My grandmother would always have a, a couple of avocados there for us to put it with everything, with our soup, with our, with, with our meat, with, with and at our salad. It was like, yeah, I just have avocado. It was a joyful way of connecting. It is one of our sacred plants. Then this freaking colonization happens and uh, the economical colonization. I'm not talking even about the Spanish. I'm talking about the recent economical boom of avocado, uh, the hipsters going, wow, this is the best meal because blah, blah, blah. Cool. I love that you're enjoying avocado. And it happened at the same time that they were, they were screaming, build that wall, build that wall, blah, 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 blah. Mexican turn. At the same time, they were taking our magical, beautiful, delightful plant that has given us so much that is so meaningful to our family, that is the center of the table where we are eating. And as they are eating our avocados, they are screaming, build okay. that world, build that world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the respect. They took it away from us and they were insulting us at the same time. Don't be like them. And then to make matters worse, what you see now is that avocado is so abused. And this is the important part. Avocado has been so abused that the narcos go and kidnap full harvests spaces, full towns with their harvest, they burn it down and they plant avocado trees instead. So you see indigenous communities dying or being kidnapped or being um, threatened and abused so that they plant avocados where they had different crops before, where they had corn or where they had nopal or where they had whatever different crops. And they are being forced to plant avocados in lands that were theirs, but are no longer theirs because now they have been taken by this mafia, by these narcos. So uh, you're causing pain. Your colonization causes pain and suffering. You're part of the problem. So start being part of the solution. Start supporting the people that, that is deeply connected to the medicine or the plant or the thing that you're fashionably consuming. Start being responsible and being part of the change. Make sure to inform yourself about that culture that is giving you that treasure that you are enjoying and using and abusing so much so that you can find ways to support them. That matters. That is the difference between being a colonizer and appreciating the culture and appreciating the gifts of these cultures. And that's all I have to say. Thank you.